Okay, this video actually was originally in video three for chapter four of applied mathematics, but uh, it turns out I end up talking a lot uh, about just the personal finance, the economic concept and everything. So, and there's nothing about mathematics uh, in there. So, and it's it getting pretty long. So I decided to cut it off from the main video, but since I already had it, so I decided to, uh, uh, still put it on Blackboard, uh, uh, sorry, on YouTube. So in case you're interested about like some something fundamental about your uh, personal finance, uh, please take a look. I think there's a lot of interesting points in this video, although there's, it has nothing to do with mathematics. Okay, in chapter four, there are five points I think are fundamental and you need to understand good. So uh let's talk about them one by one so the first point i want to talk about is uh uh personal finance this is actually not mathematics we're talking about this is like finance or econ economy 101 stuff okay so what do we need to know about personal finance okay uh three important concepts okay income Expense and then uh, uh, net income. Okay, what is income? It's like whatever you 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 get, like like a salary or somebody like your parents give you whatever. You have like a monthly income, annual income, right? It's it's a it's the money you get. What is expense, right? You, you, you spend something, right? You pay the money off. So the mo it's money that goes out. So what is the net income? So take the amount you have in the income, subtract the amount you, you have in the expense. That's your net income, right? Let's say your annual income is uh, th uh, $30,000. And then you spend, you add everything monthly, like your electricity bill and your, the food, uh, uh, the rental and everything. Let, let's say, to make it easy, like a, you have uh, 25,000 expense. So the net income basically is this minus this is like uh, 5,000. This is your net income, okay? Now let's say another case, uh, you, you have more net income than, uh, I mean, so you have more expense than income. Let's say you spent, you buy some fancy, you bought some fancy uh, bags, or uh, clothes or whatever, it costs you like uh, 45 uh, thousand, then it become, you, you use this subtract that, it becomes negative, okay, uh, 50, uh, 15 thousand, okay. This minus that means that your net income is negative, that means you do not own this money, you owe this money, you owe this money to somebody, okay. Now you may, you may use your credit card or you may borrow money from your friends or from your parents or whatever, you may get some loan. But in the end of the day, this negative means that you owe money. Okay? So you can either own money or you owe money, right? When you own money, that means you have some saving, okay? Now, when you owe money, uh, that means you have some debt, okay? Okay, essentially, this is a cat, we're talking about cash flow here, okay? So like, like a person, like you can, you have cash going into you, this is your income, and you have cash go out, this is your expense, right? And then what is left is uh, your net income, either saving, which is a, a like positive number, right? Which is the money you own or uh, that which is the money you owe, right? Like net income. Okay. Now, in in terms of a uh, business, right? This sometimes called revenue. Well, expense is sometimes called cost, and then the net income is sometimes called uh, called uh, earning or profit. Okay. But it's the same thing. Okay. So very simple, you have something comes in, something goes out. What is left is a 
your net income or your, your earning or your profit, okay? And uh, obviously you see that for all kinds of reasons, right? It's better to have a saving than has a debt, right? So uh, uh, based on my experience, like uh, as, as far as I know, my friends and uh, what I read from books, this thing actually kind of natural. You can, for people who have a habit of spending less than they, they earn, they easily accumulate savings, okay, year by year by year. Now, for another kind of people, you, you have this habit of spending more than you earn, uh, then you naturally, you easily get a debt, okay? And then it's gonna accumulate what year by year by year by year, okay? Now, I have to say that uh, I strictly, strongly recommend that you uh, spend less than you earn, than you spend more than you earn, okay? It is a good habit to save money instead of owe a debt, okay? For all kinds of reasons, for yourself, okay? For life. And uh, so for that, if, if you're the first kind of person that you tend to save money, you don't have to worry about it, right? It's just your habit. Now you're a second kind of person, you, uh, you easily get a debt, I would suggest you to do budget, okay? Do a budget for yourself, okay? What this means is like you plan in advance, okay? You plan to, uh, you, let's say, if you look at next year, you know the, the, the income for next year, and then you kind of estimate the expense for next year. Just make sure that your expense does not go beyond your income. This way, you, you wouldn't get more debt, okay? And you, you can save money in the next year, and you, you can use the saving to pay off your debt, okay? So only for the second type of people, you need a budget, okay? For the first type, if you just have this habit by yourself, you don't have to have a budget, okay? Does that make sense to you guys? Uh, I hope it does. Okay, now the second kind of, uh, second type, uh, second topic I wanna talk about is uh, called uh, asset and uh, liability, okay? Now we're still talking about personal finance, okay? But in the previous case, we kind of talked about from the point of view of a cash flow, right? You have something comes into you, money comes in, money co goes out, and then what is left is your saving or debt, okay? Now this to uh, second uh, topic is from a different point of view, okay? Let's say you own something, right? This thing could be your asset or it could be your liability, okay? So what do we mean by asset, okay? Uh, Essentially, you can say that it's kind of like a, some kind of like investment, okay? Uh, a, a typical example is like, for example, if you own some uh, stock or you own uh, real estate or you own uh, bonds and uh, cash, okay? These are all kind of your asset, okay? Now, the second kind, uh, what is liability? Essentially, this is your, just your debt, okay? Uh, for example, like a mortgage or a student loan, okay? Okay, now what is essentially the difference between asset and liability, okay? Uh, this is actually very fundamental but very useful for you to understand, okay? Now, asset or investment is something that either is money, like cash, or it can give you money. <clears throat> Uh, like for example, the bond, right? Uh, if you buy like a U.S. bond, right? It give you, it pays you interest, okay? Or like stock, right? It pays you a dividend, like real estate, right? If you have this, you owe this house, you could uh, either live it uh, in there, so it saves you from uh, renting a house, it saves you the rents, right? So it essentially gives you money, or you can uh, rent it to somebody else and then you can collect the rent from them. Again, they give you money. So all these assets here give you money, right? Now for, uh, for the debt, it's, for the liability, it's, it's the opposite, okay? You have to give money to it, okay? Like a mortgage, right? You got a loan, right? You have to pay monthly, okay? To get a loan, right? Now, I mean, to, 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 uh, to keep it, okay? Same thing for student loan, okay? Uh, you have to pay for it, okay? That's called liability, okay? Now, for the real asset, right, if you, you buy a house, at the very beginning, you do not own it. It's not yours. It's the, it's the, you borrow money from the bank, right? Unless you pay it all uh, by cash, you have to 
pay your mortgage in that time is kind of like a liability. Now, as time goes by, you pay off the loan, right? And then after that, it's all yours. Then you can say that is your asset, okay? Certainly, uh, for whatever you want to own, right? I suggest you own asset, not liability, okay? Sometimes you got confused. You saw that you, you own something, but that if it's liability is not good. It's a negative thing. For example, you buy a car. Okay, certainly you need to buy cars, right? Because you need it for transportation and everything. But let's say you, you want this fancy car, fancy new car that costs you $30,000, okay? And you don't have it out of your pocket, so you, you got a loan and you, you got the car, right? That's not your asset, that's your liability. Why? Because you have to pay it every month. You have to give money to keep it. It's your liability, okay? Now, I would say, don't get those expensive cars if you don't have the money. Instead, buy a used car for a couple thousand dollars and then you own it and then you can use it, the transport and everything. And that at least is your, it's kind of like your asset, okay? Now, another thing, I, I, another example like uh, yourself, like right? say, why do you want to go to college, okay? Uh, because if you go to college, you actually, uh, you kind of like, you're, you become an asset of yourself, okay? In the sense that you get a degree, right? You can use this degree to get a job, and this job pay your money, so you can get the money from yourself. Now, this is a kind of like asset, right? You get money from yourself every month, every year, right? So uh, the, the idea of going to college is like you actually make yourself a better asset in the sense that uh, you can get more uh, salary every year, okay? That's the whole point of uh, uh, do, doing college. I mean, not whole point, okay? Uh, but there's, there's some point, it makes sense, right? Now, another example of asset is uh, a business, okay? Now, if you start a personal business uh, and it's a good business, right? You run it well, again, it can create uh, money for you. It can create a cash flow for you, right? In this sense, is the asset for you. Now, certainly if the business is bad, right? It does not run well and you you, you, you get a lot of debt out of this, use the, uh, this business, then it may be a liability. So it depends, it depends, okay? Same thing, right? The person could be a liability, right? If you do not uh, do your college well or you, you just end up borrowing a lot of money, right? It's a liability. So again, uh, the lesson for your life is you want to get asset, not liability. Hopefully this makes sense. Okay, let's talk about, uh, uh, I'll give you two examples, one about uh, asset or investment, the other one is about uh, liability, okay? Now investment, okay? What are good investment, okay? Again, remember, a good investment is something that can pay you money, like stock, right? It give you a dividend. Now the stock has a value itself, and if you buy the stock that good enough, long-term wise, it's gonna pay you I mean, the, the value of the stock itself is going to in, increase, okay? Like Warren Buffett, right? He buy a lot of stocks, okay? good stocks. But uh, for a person, right, you, you may not be as good as Warren Buffett in terms of picking up stocks. So the best thing to buy for stock is to buy index fund, okay? Which is actually a combination of all the stocks or most of the stocks you have in the U.S. Now, as we know, overall, the U.S. economy is growing. So you buy the whole market. Okay? It's called buying market, right? You buy the whole market like index fund, right? on the long term is going to uh, pay off back. Okay? Now, the three uh, standard uh, investment is stock, bond, and uh, cash. The, 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 the last one is kind of a tribute, but it's still there, okay? Now, what's the difference between them, okay? Now, there's a, you can look at the three different uh, uh, property of this, uh, liquidity and the risk and the return, okay? Now, uh, liquidity talks about uh, uh, how easy it is to convert it back to cash. Certainly, the cash is 100% liquid, right? You can use it anytime. Now, for stock and bond, right? Uh, it depends on what you buy, which kind you buy, right? A lot of them actually kind of a uh, kind of liquid in the sense that you can pay uh, sell it immediately to get uh, uh, the money back. But for some bond, if you buy it from the, through the government, let's say you buy a long-term bond, like 10 years, right? You sell it in the middle, 
uh, you may not get your interest. In that sense, it's not that liquid, okay? But the stock normally is easy, very easy to sell in the market. But keep in mind, right? Uh, if you sell in a bad time, right? The stock value is lower than you buy uh, when the time when you bought it, then you may not want to sell it because you, you, you lose money, right? So in this sense, it's still like kind of 50-50, right? In terms of liquidity, right? Now, what about risk? Certainly, the, the stock is a, has a very high risk, okay? The market goes up and the market goes down, right? It's kind of a roller coaster, right? If you, if you have uh, paid attention to the market, right? In the year 2001, the year 2008, we have a few uh, uh, main uh, collapse of stock market, right? A lot of stocks just go down very, very long, long. Okay, so it's very high. Now, the, the risk for bond is kind of low, especially if you buy government bond uh, from US. Uh, the US has never uh, defaulted bond so far, although the US is not running well in terms of like uh, debt, right? They, as we know, there's a lot of debt of US, uh, from US, from the government, like. Uh, about twenty trillion dollars of that, right? But so far they haven't defaulted any bonds, so it's kind of low uh, the risk. Right? Now cash certainly there's you could say that there's zero risk for cash, okay? Uh, because there's always zero. Okay. Now what about return? Okay. Uh, again, for stock is actually higher, and then for bond is low. Okay. The bond interest it depends on the market. Right now, a long term I don't really know exact number. Maybe sometimes, like, uh, it depends on the term you buy, right? Five years or 10 years or 20 years, you could get, like, a 2% annual interest or 3%, et cetera, et cetera. Now, for stock, uh, the, the statistic tells us the last, if you look at the last 100 years stock market, if you just buy the market, meaning that you buy index fund, like a SP500 index fund, okay? You can get uh, annual return about, like, a, 7% or 8% or 9%, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Uh, so this is a high. So as you can see, right, it makes sense, right? The higher risk you want to take, the more return you're going to get, okay? So the lower risk you get, uh, you want to take the lower re re return, back, okay? Now for cash, uh, I have to say that the, 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 the return for cash normally is negative, okay? Why it's negative, okay? Uh, you say, I got $100, right? It's $100 today and it's $100 uh, a year from now, it seems like I got zero, I mean, uh, additional return, but it's not negative, but actually it is negative. Why? Because there's inflation, okay? As we know, the price you buy, I mean, the price for any goods, like right? uh, milk or uh, food or uh, gas or uh, house, right? As time goes by, uh, long-term wise is keep increasing. This is called inflation. So <clears throat> the money loses the value over time. So if you just keep it as cash, okay, you actually essentially get a negative return. Okay? Now even bond may not keep up with the uh, inflation. So if you really want to keep up with inflation in long term wise, you better buy stock. Okay? Now uh, there's these three kind of investment. Now which uh, one you should buy, uh, which you invest you should invest in. It depends on the your goal. You want investment, uh, invest for your uh, retirement. Like you, you're, you're talking about uh, 30 years from now or 40 years or 20 years from now, right? It's a long-term investment. Uh, in that case, because of long-term, you, you can take more risk. So in your portfolio, portfolio means uh, uh, like uh, the combination of investment you do. In your portfolio, you may you want you want maybe you want a higher percentage of store stock, a lower percentage of bond and cash because you can take higher risk. That means like uh, you don't worry about the stock market crashes in a few years from now, right? Uh, because you don't need the money right now. You can let it go, keep it there, and then eventually it will come back, right? Now you want to invest in something you want uh, for short term investment like uh, five years. Maybe you want to save for a car or a house. You want to increase the percentage of bond in your portfolio and reduce the percentage of stock in your portfolio. Okay? Again, that is because uh, you can take a little bit of risk, but not too much uh, because uh, you don't want to all your money goes to stock market and then in five years it collapses and then you want the money to, for your car, but the, you lose money 
because the, the, the collapse of the stock market, right? And so the, short, the shorter term you have for your investment, the more cash and bond you, would have, you want to have, and then the less amount of stock you want to have, okay? Now for specifics, for the details, you need to read a book about investment, or you, you consult some uh, uh, people who work in this uh, industry, okay? Uh, to keep it. But this will give you the basic idea. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay, finally, let's talk about that a little bit, okay? Now, in general, a good idea is do not have that, okay? Just have savings every year. Do not uh, own that, okay? That, oh, oh, that, that's not a good situation. Now, now in a few cases, it may make sense to own, own, own that, okay? The first case is a mortgage, okay? Now, because in that case, if you want to live in the house, own a house, and uh, you just simply have, don't have that huge amount of money. Now you, you could choose to rent and save your money until you can, you can afford for it, right? But then it may be like 10 years or 20 years and uh, you lose the whole purpose of owning a house, right? You don't live in there. So in this sense, it may make sense to have a mortgage. And also remember your house is in real estate, okay? Long-term wise, you're gonna, the value is gonna increase. So you know, after you pay off your mortgage, right? You have an asset with you, right? And it has value, with it, and the value increases. So it makes sense. In the second case, maybe it's student loan, okay? Again, in this case, short-term wise, you owe a debt, right? But long-term wise, you, you, you're paying for a asset, which is you increase your value uh, as a person to get salary, right? So uh, maybe in the future, you get better salary, and this can compensate the loan the debt you have, you pay it, okay? Uh, so it may make sense, okay? Now I would say, uh, other than these two cases, most cases the debt you, you owe does not make sense. Except, it, it, especially something called consumer debt, okay? Like for example, you wanna buy this TV, right? The very fancy TV, 15 inch TV or something, okay, 50 inches TV or 70 inches TV. You wanna get a debt for it and then uh, the the bad thing about consumer debt is, firstly, you pay you need to pay interest. So besides the principal, you need to pay interest for the for the. So you end up paying more than the actual value of the uh, the the good you buy, uh, or you buy you want to buy a car. Okay. The second thing bad is, is the value of the the product you have decreases instead of increase as time goes by. Right. Let's say you buy this fancy car this year for. $50,000, 10 years from now, you, you check the market price, it becomes 30,000, or like 20,000, or even 10,000, okay? You lose value, it lose value, okay? The same thing for the TV or a computer or a smartphone, they lose values as time goes by. So avoid consumer debt at all, okay? It's not a good idea to have it at all. Leave within your means, 